Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to explain to you the concept of adaptive scopes in Microsoft Purview. Uh, so uh, let me explain to you kind of the use case, and this will become a little bit more obvious. So uh, I am obviously in Microsoft Purview. This is where you set up your uh, retention policies, you know, information governance, you know, records management uh, and stuff like that. So here is a use case. Uh, let's just say uh, you have a requirement to uh, maintain uh, documents on all project sites, um, on all client sites for a period of uh, seven years. So uh, in this particular case, um, you would navigate obviously to Microsoft uh, Purview and create retention policies and apply them to the sites. And uh, let me uh, show you what typically uh, we used to do in the past. And then let me tell you what we now have in terms of this new uh, capability. So this uh, screen that you see is relatively new. In the past, we only had pretty much one choice, static. What did it mean? So uh, it meant w that um, when you created a retention policy, let's say, you know, keep all the stuff, you know, all the documents for seven years, you had to then, you know, physically, you know, pretty much pick and choose the specific, um, you know, sites you would like to maybe apply um, the policies to. So obviously you can apply retention policies to more than just sites, uh, right? You can apply them to OneDrive accounts and mailboxes. Uh, in exchange, uh, but for the purpose of this video, let's just stay with SharePoint sites. And when, um, you know, it, it, the, the way it's configured now, it would pretty much apply um, retention policy to all the sites, but you could also say, you know what, um, so let's say uh, you had 10 project sites and uh, you want this retention policy to apply to all of them. You actually had to physically um, you know, specify those uh, sites uh, here, you know, one by one or, you know, you know, how many sites you had. And essentially you had to physically specify the URL uh, of the project sites you wanted to uh, apply the retention to. And that's how it worked in the past. Uh, luckily, we now have another option um, based on adaptive scopes right here. And let me show you. So you click uh, next. And essentially, uh, the way it works, the way adaptive scopes, uh, scope works is that it's dynamic. Uh, instead of uh, specifying the you know specific URL of the sites you want to apply retention to, you could assign it to the sites based on attributes. Now, uh, I already created an, ad uh, an adaptive scope, uh, you know, previously right here, but let me carry you through the process and you will understand how it works. All right, let me, let's go ahead and create the adaptive scope together and you will see how it works. So I'm going to click cancel here. Why not create a retention policies right now? But um, so um, they recently moved uh, this adaptive scopes uh, to the new location. So uh, we used to be able to access it from here, but now it's available under the roles and scopes uh, tab, just like that. And uh, I already, by default, obviously this will be blank. I already created this adaptive scope previously, uh, but we're going to create a new one. And uh, let's just say uh, we are going to call it a uh, client site. All right. So we want this adaptive scope to um, to apply to all the client sites. And yeah, let's skip uh, this screen. Uh, this is not re relevant to this um, you know video. And these are the three choices you have. All right. So essentially, you can list the attributes. Uh, of different sites or maybe user attributes or even attributes for Microsoft 365 group. And you can apply um, the retention policy based on certain attributes. Since we have project sites, uh, let's continue with um, uh, that particular example. So I'm going to choose SharePoint sites here. And essentially this is where you specify uh, the, um, you know, essentially the query uh, that will only select specific sites from you know the pool of the sites that you have. Now, uh, this is based on KQL or keyword query language. Uh, however, um, if so, if you're familiar with KQL, you can actually rely on managed properties and build 
um, some pretty extensive uh, KQL uh, queries, but uh, let me just show you a really simple example. So uh, I want to create an adaptive scope uh, and you essentially have a list of all the, all the different, um, uh, you know, managed properties. All right. Uh, but uh, let's pick a simple example here. Uh, we are going to base it on site URL or site name. So if you have, let's say, if you have been really strict about your naming convention and all your client sites uh, maybe start with a particular word or maybe URLs start with a particular word, then you can actually rely on that uh, particular string um, to define the adaptive scope. So in my case, uh, in my case, um, let's pretend this is a client site, but you know, the URL of the site always contains the word project. All right, just like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick site URL. It could be the site name if, um, you know, again, you have uh, some sort of naming convention for site names. And I'm going to say starts with, and I'm going to say a project. All right, just like that. And, um, it automatically builds the query for you, as you can see right here. And you can add additional property, all right? Uh, maybe, you know, or maybe this next one would be based on site name, right? Maybe it's the site name is, uh, you know, let's do starts with uh, maybe um, uh, client uh, and then whatever the name is, right? So essentially uh, you create a query here uh, that the adaptive scope will only include the SharePoint sites uh, that contain this particular keywords in the site name or, or the site URL. And then after you click next, essentially, right, you you, you submit this um, policy and adaptive scope, I mean, I'm sorry, and uh, essentially it will be available in this list. Once you uh, define it here, then you can go back to uh, the definition of the um, retention policy and it will be available. Um, remember, I kind of ended uh, uh, the presentation there. Uh, it, you, you will be able to choose the uh, adaptive scope uh, at that point of time. Let me show you something else. Let me show you something else uh, though. Um, let's create another scope, all right, just like that. And uh, let me show you something else. Uh, the uh, beauty about this is that you can define your adapt adaptive scope, not just for SharePoint sites, but also for OneDrive um, accounts. And the use case could be, um, let's just say uh, you are part of multinational corporation and you have different retention requirements. Maybe um, the users from US, uh, they have a retention policy of seven years and then you know, employees from uh, Canada or Europe, you maybe have to retain it for 10 years or forever. Uh, so you have pretty much different uh, retention policies based on different uh, locations where offices, uh, or, you know, users are based. In this case, you would choose the users option, click next. And just like that, you have all these different attrib attributes related to the uh, to the users. So essentially, these are all the fields from the uh, Microsoft Entra ID. And again, you know, assuming that uh, you did your homework and all of these fields are populated for all employees, you could say something like this, where, you know, city or country, right, is equal to, and, you know, for example, USA, all right? So essentially, or maybe, uh, maybe different department name or maybe, um, um, you know, different offices, all right? Maybe different retention policies for different offices. So essentially uh, the idea here and what will happen behind the scenes when you ultimately, let's go back to that particular screen. So when you go back and define your retention policies uh, at this point, yeah, I probably want to be here. And let's create a new one, just like that. Here we go. Let me click next a few times. And the idea here is that instead of uh, hard coding, if you will, right, the URLs, because you're always going to um, essentially get new sites, right? Uh, you're always get, going to get new employees. You don't want to go back here and add and keep adding all these different URLs manually. Once you 
um, set up the adaptive scope as you onboard new employees and assign them different offices or, uh, you know, counters within their uh, directory, within the directory, or as you create new sites and follow the naming convention, they will essentially, um, you know, the adaptive scope will automatically include or exclude them uh, kind of accordingly. So uh, that's essentially the idea. Yeah, once the adaptive sc scope is defined, remember, it's going to be available from this list over here, okay? And then, yeah, if you notice, um, I'm applying this adaptive scope to all the project sites, but it kind of tells me here, it will only apply it to, to all the ones that are matching the logic we defined within the um, adaptive scope. But other than that, uh, it's pretty much, yeah, uh, after that, it's pretty much the same experience as if you create a regular kind of retention policy and you define your retention period and so on. Um, but uh, long story short, this adaptive uh, scope uh, feature uh, really uh, provides kind of scalability, right? And uh, uh, really provides uh, the dynamic way of managing your, um, you know, retention and records management within your organization. So that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video. Hopefully you learned uh, something new uh, in the uh, description of this uh, video. I will include uh, the link to an article that I wrote on my blog uh, about the same topic. So definitely check it out. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, and as always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.